Podcast. Today, I have Dr. Andrew Blackwood with me. We are going to be delving into self-care and relationships. And when we're talking about self-care and relationships, we are talking about emotional intimacy. And that is what we are going to be honing in on and talking about how we can really cultivate a sense of empowerment, cultivate your self-care as you're developing that all-important emotional intimacy in your relationships. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am thrilled because today I have Dr. Andrew Blackwood with me. We are going to be delving into self-care and relationships. And when we're talking about self-care and relationships, we are talking about emotional intimacy. Now, just to give you a little bit of background about Dr. Andrew Blackwood, otherwise known as Coach Drew or Drew, he is a registered psychotherapist. He is a life coach. And he is somebody that I have personally been impacted by with the work that he is putting out into the world. He is the author of the book, The Art of the Genuine Apology, which you need to read. So I'm linking linking that in the description below. Make sure that you check it out. And his work does revolve around what it means to be in a meaningful, impactful, and healthy relationship. So Drew... I'm so excited and so grateful that you're taking time out of your really busy schedule to have this conversation with me. You and I have recently connected, but I was just sharing with you before we, before we started recording how much your work is impacting how I am functioning in my relationship with my husband right now. And I know that what you're offering has the potential to impact so many more and is impacting so many more right now. Um, So let's dive right in. And I'd love to hear from you how you define emotional intimacy and why it is so important for people to cultivate that in the relationships they have. Well, for starters, thanks so much, Heather, for having me. Uh, it, I, I'm touched and I appreciate it um, because that's part of my mission. That's what I exist to do, um, help people have healthier relationships. And part of that is um, emotional intimacy. And that really, emotional intimacy is, is a composite of a number of things. But one of the main things is authenticity. Like you cannot consider yourself emotionally intimate if you are not being yourself, Mm. if you're not showing up, if you're not, you know, comfortable enough. And I know I I come, I come from a biblical worldview and I grew up in church and there's this phrase that I love so much. It's called naked and not ashamed, right? To be with someone and bear everything and feel no shame, that's, emotional intimacy and i mean so you can be emotionally intimate with your daughter your son your father your friend it really doesn't matter because we're not talking about sexuality it it, it can go there depending on the relationship but it is about being being truly you and being comfortable to be that and with with that idea with being that vulnerable you know vulnerability is scary for some people, I think, because it means putting yourself out there in some ways and and maybe pushing the edges of boundaries we have. And so I'm wondering, how does someone take care of themselves when they're being that vulnerable in a relationship? And I I love that you you define relationship as well. That's not just about our, our, you know, it's not just about a sexually intimate partnership, that it can be with other people in our lives. So how do we take care of ourselves when we're in the midst of being that vulnerable and being that authentic? Right. You know, it's the whole idea of boundaries is key. Yeah. But you can't really talk about boundaries unless you're really talking about self-awareness, right? Because if you don't know who you are, um, you don't know um, how you are <laughs> when certain things happen, then it's very hard to get a real appreciation of what you need 
and where your limits are. And that is so important. So when I think about self-awareness, I think about the reality that it's important. And most of us don't think about life this way, but it's important to tease apart our feelings from our thoughts and, mm -hmm. and our emotions and how they all work together because they're very different. Um, but if you cannot, if you struggle to identify how you feel, label how you feel, tolerate how you feel, then it's going to be very difficult to put that in words and convey to somebody else. Then we're going to be stuck thinking sometimes that they should know how I feel, right? We're in a relationship. <laughs> how could you not get this? Well, you didn't tell me, so how am I supposed to get it? We're two different people, right? So we have these assumptions that we're not even aware of and they form our expectations. So the more you are aware of your how you feel, what's going on for you. And I, and I, and I like the term baggage, you know, your stuff, your history, the stuff yeah. that comes with you. The more aware you are of that is the better chance you are able to one, understand it, validate it, manage it, and then communicate it. Mm. Because a lot of people, they can't tell their stuff from the other person's stuff. It's like everybody's yes. bag, they open it all and it's all just in one pile. <laughs> Then you have, then you have more than just one problem because you can't tell your stuff apart from their stuff and everybody's got stuff, right? Yes. So yeah, I think that, uh, that awareness starts there. I know what, I, I know what's my stuff, then I can manage that stuff. And I, and I think being able to manage our stuff is so important because when we don't manage our stuff well, then it makes it very hard to take responsibility. And that impacts safety in a relationship, right? Because if you don't take responsibility, then often somebody's gonna to try to force you to take responsibility and hold you accountable. And that dynamic doesn't bode well in relationships. It really doesn't. Yeah. So, yeah, it helps not to play the blame game that way. Yeah, and, and you work with individuals on a regular basis. You're working with couples on a regular basis. I'm curious what tip you might give somebody who's looking at all of this laundry on the floor and they're going, I don't even know how to start sorting my stuff from the other person's stuff. I, I think what can happen in relationships and what I've seen in my own work is, is there's this, all of a sudden everything gets intertwined and people end up feeling like, okay, what's mine is theirs and what's theirs is mine. And we can't separate the two much like we've just got this pile of laundry on the floor. I don't know whose white t-shirt that is. It might be yours. It might be mine. What tips do you give couples or give, people who are in relationships where they need to start that sorting process? Wow, that's a good question. Um, you know, let's stick with the laundry analogy, right? Yeah, I like it. That's a good one. <laughs> it's working. The same way you would sort out laundry is the same way you sort out your stuff, one piece at a time. Yes. It really, it really doesn't matter where you start. You can pick this thing up and be like, hmm, is this mine or is this yours? Okay, because sometimes there are patterns in our engagement. And so if something keeps happening, it's, it's good to stop. We're, we're not at the point where we're going to be judgmental and telling people, you know, well, this is your stuff. That's, that's not the way to go about it. To say, okay, right. This is the situation we find ourselves in. You get to ask yourself, is this mine? I think that's the place to start. You know, you know, do I have a history of this? Before this particular relationship, is this a pattern of mine? Have other people told me that, you know, you tend to get, you know, snippy around nine, nine o'clock, right? <laughs> nine o'clock, maybe you should call it quits, right? And just wrap it up, you know? So it could be as simple as that, because I know I'm a morning person. My wife is not so much a morning person. Yes. I'm fresh, I'm ready to go in the morning. I'm ready to tackle stuff, whereas at night, I'm just like, mm -hmm. no, right? And, mm -hmm. but knowing myself, knowing that I can be a little 
less attentive and maybe even grumpy and short at night. That's my stuff, yeah. right? So when I own that, it's a, it's a part of it. So that becomes part of my awareness. Then I look at the next thing. Okay, where is this from? What does this have to do with, right? And then I journal. Okay. And let me tell you, Heather, I journal every day and sometimes twice a day. Um, okay. right in the morning and at night and I reflect okay this is what I wanted to experience in my day this is what's happening I tell you yesterday I journaled three times in one day well, there was okay. a <laughs> on, right? so writing things down really helps me to process what's going on for me because my stuff I'll tell you about my stuff when I get stressed anxiety provoking thoughts that's when they creep up mm -hmm. when uncertainty is happening in life okay it's like i start to question things and i start to use all or nothing thinking patterns when yes. i'm in good spaces and i'm relaxed that's not a problem for me right. right but because i know that that's my stuff so again that awareness it doesn't matter where you start it's you continue to get to know yourself better and better and better and again a lot of the times we focus on what other people are doing wrong, doing to us what we want people to change. And mm -hmm. it is so powerful when we take ownership of our own stuff, increase our awareness, and then we, we can model, right? We can model taking that responsibility for other people. Yes. T to me, what you're talking about in that start with one thing, move through it, feel into it, that is self-care and empowerment right there in a relationship. Because it's like when, when we aren't aware of what our stuff is, we're falling into these habits and patterns, right? Maybe the all or nothing thinking or the anxiety provoking thoughts. And when we don't understand where that comes from, it takes us off center, it takes us off balance. And when we're off balance in a relationship, I know when I'm off balance in my relationship, it's not a good situation, right? Yeah, I'm right. not communicating well. I can't hold space for anybody really because I'm in my head and I'm not grounded in myself. I'm not, I'm not living in alignment with my core values. And right. I think when we begin that process of sorting and picking it up, looking at it, owning it, which is incredibly empowering to say, yep, that's mine, and I have the power to do something about this. Right. Uh, it can really transform not only how we're looking at the other person in a relationship, but also how we're viewing ourselves in the relationship. Exactly. Yes. Well, yeah. I love I know, it. Some people have a pattern. One of their things is when, because a lot of people don't enjoy conflict. Yeah. I, I'm one oh. of those <laughs> But I, I'm, I'm becoming increasingly more and more comfortable with right. navigating conflict. And a big shift for me was there's a difference between addressing an issue mm -hmm. and engaging in conflict, mm -hmm. right? Engaging in confrontation. And issues will always be present. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to become proficient and adept at navigating that. And one of the coping strategies or, or one of the ways that some people manage is they dumb down themselves on some level, almost as if they, they disappear. Mm -hmm. They don't matter, they are insignificant. And again, that might be a learned behavior, that might be from other things that have happened in their lives. However, especially when it comes to offering an apology, a lot of people think that I don't matter my perspective, my view, my experience doesn't matter. Once I, once I take ownership and I apologize, that means I take all the wrong, I deserve all the bad treatment, and I deserve it, I deserve it, and that's not it at all. It's still important to be able to say, you know what, this is what I'm taking responsibility for, this is my part. I'll talk to you about your part. This is internal dialogue. Another day, right. another time, we will get to your stuff, but I wanna take ownership of my stuff. And that doesn't mean that you open yourself to take abuse and all that stuff. I was, I was talking to somebody yesterday and I am just admiring how he's grown so much. I mean, he was the extreme in terms of like, listen, I ain't taking, I'm not taking nobody's stuff. Like, no. And he was very aggressive. Right. 
But now he's found that balance where he can say, listen, I hear what you're trying to say to me, but how you're saying it, that's not going to work, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I, I, I want to I hear you out. He was able to manage that interaction in a way that was so respectful to him and the other person, even though the other person wasn't being respectful. Right. That created change in that dynamic because he didn't force the person to take responsibility. He just made it clear. You're crossing a boundary here and that's not, that's not going to work. That's not what we want with each other. That's not right. And I, I just listened to it. I'm like, ah, oh, I love it. I love so it. Good. It's so good. <laughs> it is. It is. You know, a lot of your work focuses on the apology. And I really feel as though an apology is one of the most intimate things we could offer someone else mm -hmm. and ourselves. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, you, your, your work focuses on the art of the genuine apology. This is a kind of a two-part question. Why the apology? Why is, has this become such a fascination for you? Because I think it's something a lot of people tend to avoid. We don't, we don't want to take that responsibility or there's shame associated with apologizing. Um, and there's a vulnerability in apologizing because what if that apology is rejected or what if somebody doesn't appreciate the apology or they can't hear it right now? Um, so the first part is why the apology? I'm really fascinated by that. And then the second part is you walk through steps of how to create a genuine apology. And the part that really intrigues me is imagining the impact. So first, why the apology? And then could you break down imagining the impact? Because I think that imagining the impact speaks to our self-care and personal empowerment, as well as the self-care and personal empowerment of the other person in the relationship. Certainly, certainly. So why the apology? <sighs> you know, there's so many reasons for it. Mm. I think we, we don't understand it because there are different levels to apologies, right? There's the commonplace one, you know, then there's the, the Band-Aid one where, you know, it's just like, just apologies, just get it over with. Um, and when it comes down to rupture in a relationship where there's been either a betrayal or a loss and grief, right? Because a lot of people don't realize when there's hurt in relationship, it impacts the other person's expectation, their, their dream of what they wanted with you, what they expected from you. And um, I see a lot of people trying to, trying to address it without success because they don't, woven into an apology is communication, healthy communication, mm -hmm. which has a whole lot to do with listening. Right? A lot of people think an apology are just the words, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. What are you sorry for? Mm -hmm. Right? You're not just sorry for the behavior. You're sorry for the impact the behavior had on the other person. Mm -hmm. And when we appreciate that, there's a growing awareness that, again, I'm not you. So I, even though I didn't intend for this to happen, that doesn't mean that you were not significantly hurt. You are a different person. So what hurts you and impacts you the way it does, it may not impact me that way. And it doesn't have to. When I can get a hold of that and I can really appreciate it, then I start to allow myself to feel what you feel, to connect with you, to connect with your pain to then, only when I understand your pain can I fully address it. If I don't get it, no matter how sincere my offering is, it's going to seem like I'm patronizing you or I'm trivializing the situation because I don't get it. If I don't want to get it, you can see what a problem that is yes. and what a problem that's going to be because I'm devaluing you, I am minimizing your concerns 
and that's not loving. So the apology, it holds all of that together. And the way I see it, it's, it's a bridge from, it, it bridges people, right? Because when there's a rupture between us, there's this, this gap. And the apology is building a bridge from one place to the other. And uh, a lot of people, I, I, the way I see it and I talk about it, and I could talk about it, as you know, for days, <laughs> because the, the genuine apology, it, it bridges forgiveness and reconciliation. Yes. Ultimately, the, the destination is reconciliation. And reconciliation is when we are on the same page, when we know where we want to go and we know how we're going to get there together. A lot of people are in a relationship together and they are not reconciled. Mm. They're not on the same page about so many different things. And the reality is that happens in relationships. Um, but there's a difference between not being on the same page about what color to paint the wall versus um, how you're going to treat me when I'm wounded, when I'm in need. I, I was working with one couple and the, the wife asked the question, are you, going to, are you going to take care of me when I get older? And it was such a powerful question, came from a very, very deep place. And it was a no brainer for the husband because he knew his intentions, but he wasn't aware of the small hurts over the years that caused her to question, mm. are you, are you going to be able to care for me? Like, I know that you're saying that you will, but in these moments, you're not caring for me now. Right. So why would I think and believe that you're going to care for me then? And when he was able to really see that in present day, mm. so, oh, oh, Right? So the apology and, and creating an atmosphere for a genuine apology, because it goes both ways, it moves one to hear and to feel. So to your, the second part of your question, um, when we can imagine the impact that we've had. And in that dynamic, I was supporting them to communicate that to each other. Mm -hmm. Those things are so deep. We, we don't often talk about those things. So sometimes that's why, that's where the coaching comes in. That's right. I've, I've honed this whole listening thing over the past 15, 16 years professionally. And then before that, you know, the calling, you know, where people just come and talk to yes, you. Yes, totally. <laughs> so, you know, but that's the beauty when people learn how to do that. Eventually, they don't need to come to me to do that because they've experienced that. They've learned how to do that with and for each other. But if the person is not communicating that to you, you still have the opportunity to sit back and think about it. Knowing what I know about this person, if this situation happened to this person, if I did this, when I did this, it probably impacted them this mm -hmm. way. What did it cause them to feel? What are they probably thinking? What impact did it have? And when I start to do that, oh, it's like, oh, okay. And then their actions start to make sense. It's like, oh, that's why she burnt up all my clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <Right? It's, it's, laughs> that's why that laundry pile is no longer on the floor. Oh. Right? That's why she stopped answering my call. That's why, I mean, it doesn't make the behavior right or appropriate, right. but when we can generate that understanding and that empathy, then when we offer the apology, when people hear that, they're like, oh, yeah, that is how I yeah, so you, you actually put some thought into this. Okay, they're not ready to trust you yet. Right, right. But their, their ears are listening, their heart is starting to listen. They're like, okay, all right, so you're, you're paying attention. Okay, you know me. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what this is all about, knowing the other person. And the truth is, because they haven't necessarily told you, they might not get it right, but just the effort that you put in people are so gracious to be like well that's not quite it but close or you're getting there or i appreciate the i appreciate the effort and then then because it's a dialogue you can say okay help me understand because 
I, I don't quite have it yet. I want to get it right. Mm -hmm. And once you get that, then you, then you move on into the next, uh, the next step. Right. And that's where the credibility starts to really get restored. Yes. You know, this, this apology, and I like to call it flexing your empathy muscle because it takes practice and it's not a one and done. You have to do it over and over and over again. To me, flexing that empathy muscle, to me, showing up with that humility, with that vulnerability, with that authenticity, with the willingness to excavate and go deeper if you haven't quite got it, that for me is that emotional intimacy. And that's how we can take care of ourselves. And that's how we can show up for, yeah. for the other person. But also when we're doing that, we're showing up for ourselves. And I think, I think oftentimes people think that it's just a give. I'm just going to give it away. I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I'm the giver in the relationship. I'm the giver in the relationship. I'm always showing up for the other person. But what we have to remember is that if we show up with that humility, vulnerability, if we show up with that willingness to excavate our own stuff and start pulling our own pieces of laundry off the floor, if we're willing to flex that empathy muscle and listen to what is being said, and not just verbally, not just verbally, physically, emotionally, energetically, spiritually, yeah. Yeah. if we're listening to that, I do think it cultivates our ability to have that healthy relationship that you're on a mission to support everybody to have. When you, and I'm, I'm speaking for myself and to everybody who's watching, when you do this work and, and you actually start putting it into practice, I have found it is incredibly transformational. And when we start applying these strategies, we are cultivating that healthy emotional intimacy that enables self-care, it enables personal empowerment, and it enables the other person the freedom to show up as themselves. Right, exactly. Which well, is huge. Yeah, yeah. So, Dr. Andrew Blackwood, thank you so much. And I know that you work with people around the world. Tell us how we might engage with you, how we would sign up for a session with you, everything that you've got going on. And again, I'm going to be linking to his book down in the description below, The Art of the Genuine Apology, which you want to read. Um, so Drew, how do, we, how do we work with you? Oh, well, my website, www.coachdrew.ca. Um, you'll find ways to contact me there. Um, I'm launching this wonderful course um and uh let's see info at coachdrew.ca you can email me there but um i like the links on my website you can yes. schedule yes yes right you know just put yourself in my calendar that's it's so right easy. technology right it is um, yep so I, yeah the beauty of the the virtual option it's so it's so accessible People meet with me from their home or they can meet with me from their office. It is the way to go. It's amazing. You can catch Drew in a myriad of places. I'm going to link to some of his YouTube videos down below so you can get to know Drew a little bit better. Again, his website is exceptional. You can book a session directly from his site. He, he offers those sessions online. The link to his book is there. And that online course that you're launching, you can also get information about that link to it there. I know that you're offering a webinar in a couple of days, which I think will happen before this video is is out there, but I know that you have another one that you make available. It's a, it's a pre-recorded webinar, so people can access that as well. Um, Coach Drew, I am so grateful. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for the work that you're doing. And I am sure that every other person who's encountered you and has even tried a little bit of the strategies and approaches that you're offering can attest to the power it has. So thank you for all you're doing, I'm really. I'm so honored, Heather. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you too and all that you do. I love watching your videos. As I tell you all the time, <laughs> you'll see my comments. I love this. You just offer such a wonderful way of seeing things. And again, that's the, that's the beauty of difference 
differences, right? You see yes. things that I don't see, or you see them in ways that I don't. So I encourage you to keep doing what you do too. And I'm so glad that we did this. So glad. I am too. I'm. Thank you so much. And everybody, again, all of the links will be in the description below. As always, stay ignited out there. If you liked this video, be sure to click that bell, subscribe to my channel, head on over to Coach Drew's channel as well. Make sure that you subscribe there. We will see you soon. Take care. Bye.